In this video, we will study the pathology of membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis. Firstly, we will study its definition. Then we will see its pathogenesis and clinical features. Then we will learn its morphology in details. So, membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis is a type of glomerulonephritis that involves thickening of basement membrane and proliferation of cells inside the capillary loops. That's why it is known as membranal proliferative. Now, the first point to consider here is that Previously, membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis was divided into two categories as MPGN type 1 and MPGN type 2, which was also known as dense deposit disease. Now, this MPGN2 or dense deposit disease is categorized separately under C3 glomerulopathies, and here all the information applies to type 1 MPGN or type 1 membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis. Now let's study its pathogenesis. So basically this disease starts when our immune system develops antibodies against some unknown antigens which result in formation of circulating immune complexes. Now these circulating immune complexes that are formed in membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis have more affinity to bind to the glomerular basement membrane at subendothelial location. So this result in formation of subendothelial glomerular deposits. Now recall that in membranous nephropathy we studied that the formation of these glomerular deposits was sub-epithelial in location, but in membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis, these immune deposits are formed at sub-endothelial side. So up to now, this is the first important difference between membranous nephropathy and this disease, membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis. Now these sub-endothelial glomerular deposits that are composed of antigen and antibodies mediate the activation of complement system pathway because you know that one of the functions of IgG antibodies is to activate the classical pathway of complement activation. Now once the complement system is activated, it results in formation of some activated complement proteins such as C3A and C5A that act as chemotactic factors for inflammatory cells. So inflammatory cells arrive in response to this complement activation at sub-endothelial location of glomerular basement membrane. Now once these inflammatory cells arrive at glomerular basement membrane at subendothelial position, they will start doing damage to endothelial cells and glomerular basement membrane. This endothelial injury results in hematuria and this hematuria can cause full-fledged nephritic syndrome. So one of the presenting features of membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis is nephritic syndrome, but in some of the cases this damage done by leukocytes also extend to the podocytes along with endothelial cells. If this damage occurs at the level of podocytes also, it results in protein urea, which can either be in the subnephrotic range or can progress into nephrotic syndrome. So in some cases of membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis, there can be nephrotic syndrome as well as nephritic syndrome. And sometimes there is isolated hematuria protein urea without nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. So the, point to, so the point to remember is that the membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis can present either with nephrotic syndrome or nephritic syndrome or both these syndromes combined. Now let's come to the morphology of membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis. In this disease, we also study three features that are light microscopy, electron microscopy and immunofluorescence. For light microscopy, the keywords to remember are membrano, proliferative, glomerular deposits and itis. You know that the name of this disease is membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis, so the keywords are very similar to this, this disease that membrano, proliferative, glomerular deposits and itis. The first keyword is membrane, so this will appear on light microscopy as thick and glomerular basement membrane. Second keyword is proliferative which means that there will be proliferation of endothelial cells and mesangial cells. So you will see thickened basement membrane with proliferating endothelial and mesangial cells. Now when the mesangial cells are being proliferated, some processes or extensions of mesangial cells get interposed inside the basement membrane and causes splitting of basement membrane. This splitting of glomerular basement membrane creates double contour which is known as tram track appearance. For example, if there is a normal basement membrane, then in membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis, the basement membrane will be thickened and splitted like this, giving resemblance to a railway track or double contours. Next keywords are glomerular deposits, so on light microscopy you will see subendothelial deposits. And the last keyword is itis, so you will see inflammatory cells that are neutrophils and monocytes. Now the last point to learn is that in membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis, due to all these elements of proliferation, the lobular nature of glomeruli becomes accentuated or increased. So the glomeruli look hypercellular and more lobular in membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis. So let's revise. Overall, on light microscopy, you see thickened glomerular basement membrane with proliferating endothelial and mesangial cells. You will also see splitting of glomerular basement membrane or tram track appearance. 
you will see subendothelial glomerular deposits and you will see inflammatory cells that are neutrophils and monocytes. So these are the light microscopic features of membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Now on electron microscopy as we discussed in the pathogenesis of this disease that it results in formation of subendothelial deposits. So on electron microscopy you will clearly see subendothelial deposits as you can see here in this diagram. Now at last as far as the immunofluorescence is concerned you will see granular deposits of IgG and C3 similar to the membranous nephropathy because this disease is also mediated by IgG containing immune complexes and complement proteins. So this concludes our discussion of membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis.